one. And here I've got some stills. And what I want to show you here is basically just the breakdown of this stone material because we don't have the time to recreate it from scratch. But let me open up the rock texture here. It's, um, well, you can see it here. It's, again, it's just a lot of noises, layer nodes, ramps, that's pretty much it. So let's, let's go through this. And um, let's set this as the output. And I already created a shortcut for that. So here we go. This is one of the noises. Then this is one of the noises, this one as well. And we've got the curvature um, node going in here. And this gives me a mask for the convex parts of the object. So if I have a look at the color layer, because this is where they are all coming together, you can see that this is our base layer noise. Then in overlay mode, I added another noise. And then I added another noise. You, you can add uh, many noises here. Um, but the cool thing is once you combine noises, it's, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a custom noise then. And you can create more variation and uh, it's less repetitive and more pleasing, more natural to the eye. So the last one here um, makes, or is making pretty much, um, well, a three-dimensional object out of this um, when it comes to shading. Right now it's a noise, but it's pretty flat. And now you can see that this um, curvature node is highlighting the edges. And this is actually something that I saw quite often when I um, had a look at rocks. So what I'm doing then is colorizing this. Now I have to do it this way for some reason. So I've got a ramp, which is gray, black, and greenish somehow. And then I pipe this into the diffuse color. And the other thing that is interesting here is the, um, the texture or the noise combination that I'm using for reflection roughness, and as well as the one that I'm using for bump. All right, and then there is another interesting thing, which is this color user data node. Because this node introduces variation to all of these rocks. So by default, or in the setting that I chose, which is the attribute name set to uh, redshift geometry ID color. You can find this here, geometry ID color. That's the one. This returns, well, one individual color for, per object where this material is assigned to. And I just pipe this into the color layer here. And the color layer uh, node is just bringing down the intensity of this color. So the base layer color is white, and I'm just adding the random color here uh, by just a little amount. And then I pipe this into the overall color. You can find this under overall. Here we go. That's the overall tint.